As we all know, the mainstream media does not promote ethical hunting in, in, in a good light. They never take the opportunity to show anything good that hunters and sportsmen do. So what's y'all's opinion of what should we be doing as a hunting community and everybody out there watching to show hunting in a good light to people that are undecided whether hunting is good or not? The good, the bad, the uglies. What, what, what are you, what's your feelings on that? Well, as hunters, each and every one of us have a responsibility to, to behave, to be ethical, to be lawful, and to show hunting in a good light. That's just, I think everybody understands that. And we've talked often through these different segments of rack focus of, of coming together and being united and all that. Let's think about something else though in this country today where you're talking about the media. There's over 300 million people in this country there's 14.7 people that are sportsmen, hunters, many are women and children coming into the sport. And there's probably that many or fewer anti-hunters. There's not, anti-hunting is not a majority. It's a boisterous, loud minority, small minority that makes a lot of noise. Well, then you do the math and you say, well, what's, where's the other 250 million, 275 million people? Where do they weigh in? That's the group here, and they're indifferent. Most of them are indifferent to hunting. They're indifferent or supportive to hunting, but they don't care, they just don't participate, and they're not anti-hunters until we act unethically. Then we just take one and slide them across the string and put them into the anti-hunting group. If we act ethically, if we introduce people, we take the time to introduce a youth maybe open our land, or maybe we do something to introduce somebody into it, we take that slide one on the string over to the hunting side. So our lot in life as hunters should not only be to go out and enjoy the, the wilds and the outdoor and the sport and all the things we talk about, but we're ambassadors. It's no, no different if you have a spiritual conviction and you want to be a witness. We're the same way for hunting. We need to be ambassadors and witnesses for hunting so that how we act and what we do sheds a good light on it so that these indifferent, the mob of the people in this country don't see us as a bunch of thugs and a bunch of irresponsible drunks when we're not. And those of us maybe that might be in this industry, they should clean up their act. That's my we, opinion. We know we talk about the media and stereotypes and stuff like that and how they portray hunting and stuff. And Steve, unfortunately, you live in the South and the South really takes a butt kicking from stereotypes and, and redneck know. jokes and things like that. And we talked earlier about, you know, things that hunters or sportsmen should do or not do in the public eye to sway people's opinions. And like a lot of us over time have seen those deer strapped on the back of a truck or somebody got his deer head propped up over the back of his truck to show man I've killed a big buck look I'm proud of it and drive up and down Main Street with it for days and things but are those type things that we got to be looking at as a group maybe not to do as much these days in this world yeah, I think you know I think we need to be conscious of that for sure because there is 250 275 million we enjoy hunting enjoys a great support right now and we need to keep it that way and the media is going to try to portray us as the dumb rednecks uh, and it's coming. Sooner or later, they're going to turn their sights on us. Uh, but we need to let the world know what we're really like. I'll argue that hunters as a group, as a whole, there's no better group of people in this country as far as doing things for the wildlife. Yeah, we harvest wildlife, but we provide a lot for them as well. But, you know, this may sound kind of corny. It probably won't make the show, but that's fine. Uh, I think as human beings, we should do this. And as hunters, we certainly need to do this. Is Just use our manners. I mean, we all know what manners are. I mean, something as simple as holding the door for a lady or kid, older man, helping somebody with something. Something simple that may sound corny, but when you got your camouflage on, I mean, the reality is you represent the hunting industry. And when you, when you use your manners, you say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. And again, I grew up in the South. We learned this. My mom and dad taught me this. But I think it, I think it puts a positive image on it. And when, you just, when you're pleasant around people and you use your manners, I think, you know, I challenge people to do that. Again, as corny as some people may think it sounds. On that same note, we talked about maybe you shouldn't have your animal exposed on the back of the trailer and guts hanging out and blood dripping off of it, covered up with a tarp or something, try and be ethical about it. And think about somebody might drive up behind you in traffic with little kids that 
don't know and looking at poor Bambi or something laying on there. But by the same token, Joel will tell you in, in his state where it was almost a law not to display it. Yeah, you had to leave the deer exposed. You had to leave big game animals exposed after you harvested it while you were transporting it. Now that's changed in the last couple of years where you can close your tailgate, but you used to have to have the tailgate open or the trunk open and you had to leave the animal exposed for, um, I guess, so that the wardens would know who's transporting uh, game animals and that kind of thing. But yeah, I think whenever you get the chance to, uh, to make a good impression as a hunter, it's a, it's a very positive thing. I think Scott said it really, really well. I think what? in even states, like Iowa, they have programs. You know, it's the hush program. Yeah, hush program. I think any time we can make a positive impact on people that have come less fortunate, have lost work, out of work, don't have food to provide for their family. You know, I think any time that any of us, and we live in a world that we hunt a lot more than most of the John Q public, and we travel from state to state. So I think, you know, if we can find somebody in the neighborhood, I know I've donated deer to you because you've got people that live out here in the country that don't have the extra means of being able to buy meat. You know, just donating a deer. And if you can take an extra 30, 40 minutes and skin it out, of course, everybody, you know, that's some of the work, but you know, skinning out a deer, preparing a deer, taking care of a deer, that's part of the hunting part. You know, part shooting it, I'm saying, well, it's done. Here's the old deer, you can have it. But there's a lot of people that I think are impacted through some of these state programs, and if not, do our own program. Take your deer to the local processor, take it to the local neighborhood. You've always got somebody you can get on the phone and donate. And again, I think that, again, sheds light that we're doing a follow through all the way through and providing somebody a meal that may may not have had. Okay, Bob, I've donated deer. Everybody here has probably donated deer to different state programs or gave them to somebody. But when was the last time you seen NBC, CBS, ABC say all the hunters of Wisconsin fed a, got a million meals of good protein to somebody? Look at the, the people down at the shelter having this meal and stuff. You never see a story like that. So how does that get out to the the bigger masses that hunters are doing that type of thing. You don't see anti-animal people showing up at them shelters, you know, with anything, you know, here's some carrots I just dug up and brought down here to you or something. You know what I'm saying? How do we get those stories more out to people? They know what real hunters are about. Well, sometimes we know from our heart what we do. Unfortunately, in the news media, and when I sit and look at this, the news media can be some of our worst enemies for hunters. Again, if there's nine things go bad, they're going to cover it. If there's one thing that goes good, they probably won't. Or vice versa. We can do all the right things, but we screw up one time. One time, and it may be out of ignorance, and it may be because we didn't know the news media is going to run with it. And again, I think it's same, some of the same things with the shootings that happened in the schools and in the theaters. Uh, the news media carries it, I think, way too far. And very seldom do we as hunters get credit for what we do good. The state of Iowa, I think last year, 1.2 million meals came out of that HUSH program. Wow. That, that's incredible, that's, that's a lot of meals. And it was, you know, and it was pretty inexpensive. I think the program, every license in Iowa costs $1 extra. That money goes like $75 to every processor that gets a deer brought to him, dumped in the parking lot, gets $75, cut it up and he's not they're not giving a whole deer away they're cutting it up in I think like two pound blocks and they're donating to people that need it but do you think that NBC or CBS or CNN or Fox ever going to show up and do a story on it you know that's what really sucks in our industry yeah and I think the people always want to know what they can and can't do and things and a lot of people you know well I don't have money and I don't have the ability it's everybody's job as a hunter to represent how they can. Some people have a means. Some people have connections into the media where they can send a message out, where they can talk to people. Some people can donate meat is all they can do. Um, some people can just act good and be on good behavior, have manners, to your point. But I think it's important that everybody that hunts realizes they can do something. They can act responsible, they can be respectful, they can be a good member of their community by donating their time. Uh, they can donate meat. If they know, you know, when it comes to the media, if, if it doesn't do any good to advertise in a hunting magazine and pat our own back, but if there's a way to 
get the message out to a local newspaper, when something like that happens, then the local hunters should grab, contact the newspaper and tell them, hey, look, you know, we provided X amount of meat to the community. And if every little town did that and 10% of them picked up the story and actually ran something, that would be a positive for the industry. And if everybody keeps trying to do those, even just a simple phone call, you know, hey, we donated, can you run a story about hunting? Somebody's gonna pick it up and one, one person, one paper, one outlet is better than none.